This one is about something called a meniscus lens. And uh, it's really just a test of, do you know how to use the uh, lens maker's equation? So let's look at it and start by drawing it. It's glass, so it has an index 1.5. The radius of the left side is concave. So we'll draw something like that. But then the radius of the right side is convex. And it's actually a smaller radius of curvature, which means kind of like a smaller circle. So kind of like that. So this is why this is called a meniscus lens. It looks like the meniscus on water if you turn your head sideways. Um, let's see. So first we want to know the focus from the left. So light going like this, what does it see the effective focus of this is? Is it going to be concave like a converging lens or is it going to be a diverging lens? We just apply the formula religiously here. 1 over f equals, and I remember it's n minus 1 over 1 times 1 over r of the left minus 1 over r to the right. Or you might say 1 over r1, 1 over r2, or it's, it's 1 before 2. So let's see if we're smart enough to plug all this in. Um, that's 1.5 minus 1 over 1. And the big trick on this is getting the signs correct. OK, so concave and convex. When you describe those surfaces, you would describe this as concave. You would describe this as convex. Because if you feel it with your finger, your finger feels a cave here. It's like your finger's going into a cave. If you feel this with your finger, it's not a cave. It's vex. It's sticking out. It vexes your finger. Okay, concave, convex. So in terms of touching the lens, it's very clear. One side's concave, one side's convex, and there the twain shall meet. Okay, but that's not what you plug in here. You plug in here what light sees. Light can't feel the lens. It doesn't have a thumb. All light does is it moves along and it sees a boundary between two media. And in this case, it's pure geometry. It doesn't care which one's high, which one's low. Light sees this boundary as concave. So you put minus 20 here. Minus. That minus sign is in the formula. You have to put that minus sign in. Light sees the right boundary as concave. Your finger says it's convex. Your finger's pushing it this way. Light's going this way. That is also concave. 1 over minus 15. So you have to put both of these minus because think about the light. Concave. Concave. Okay. That's why also keeping that sign is critical. This becomes 1.5. And this becomes minus 1 over 20 plus 1 over 15. And if you do the numbers, basically this reduces to you know minus 3 over 60 and plus 4 over 60. If you go with 60 as a common denominator, and this becomes a half. So in the end, uh, let's see, 4 over 60 minus 3 over 60 is 1 over 60 times a half is 1 over 120. Okay. So 1 over f is 1 over 120. The focal length is 120 centimeters. So that means that this lens is converging. And the reason it's converging is the, the now if we're going to go back outside to our, thi our finger feeling it, the convex side has a sharper curvature, a smaller radius than the convex side. That's why the convex converging side basically wins. It's a positive lens. It's a converging lens. B. <clears throat> What's the focal length if you go the other way? Spoiler alert, it doesn't matter. Okay, we're going to get the same answer, but let's go through the math just to make sure because it makes you feel better about the world. Minus 1 over 1. Okay, coming this way. Light sees that as convex. And your thumb sees it as convex when you feel it. And that's 1 over 15. Minus has to be there. Light sees that also as convex. 1 over 20. And then mathematically, it's exactly like what we just did. 1 over 15 minus 1 over 20, common denominator of 60. 4 over 60 minus 3 over 60 is 1 over 60. This is a half. It's equal to 1 over 120. We get the same thing. F, if you go this way, is 120 centimeters. If you can make a lens that has a focus different going one way or the other, I think you can break the law of thermodynamics. I'm not sure. I forgot. Okay, part C is uh, what if you put it in water? What's the focal length if you put it in water? 
uh, is a little different. Let's go with this case because it was less negative goofiness to deal with. 1 over f in water. Well, the geometry is all the same, but this is different. Oh, this isn't really 1, is it? Yes, the real formula is um, n of the glass, or whatever the lens is made of, but minus n of the medium over n of the medium. Right. And usually the medium is air. So you put 1 here and here. So often there's a half here. So glass is 1.5. 1.5 minus 1 is 0.5. Divided by 1 is 0.5. But if you're doing other things, different kinds of glass, different media, then it might be something different. You can remember that's the case because if this weren't really a variable, why would I put a 1 there? Anyway, let's put in some numbers. It's basically the same part. This comes out to be uh, 1 over 60 times, let's see, uh, that same part. So 1.5 minus 1.33 for water over 1.33 times this whole thing is still 1 over 60. The geometry is the same. So what this does is it puts a much smaller number here than 0.5, makes the focal length longer. So if you just <coughs> multiply that out and invert it to get F, you get that F water is 469 centimeters. Much longer, because we've basically taken away the refracting power of the glass by having it much closer to the index of the medium. So it bends the rays a lot less, makes the focal length longer.